My day starts around 7. The best part of the day is driving my daughter to school. That's our daddy-daughter time. The first thing I do is talk to the staff. I always believe that as an owner, you know, you should be really connected with your people as well as you should always have a second eye on the product that you're delivering. I realized that I've been very fortunate to come to this country. It's quite common here that people work hard and make it big. As I lost my father when I was quite young, all of a sudden I had a lot of financial responsibility being the oldest son. I grew up in southern India. I come from a very small town. Uh, I couldn't get a job. So I started a vegetable wholesale business. And in 18 months I built it into a very large business. I always wanted to go overseas because the influence of the English movies that we used to watch. I sold my business and I was able to come to Australia. When I arrived in Australia as a student, I really couldn't get any jobs. I tried to get even a sandwich hands job I couldn't get. Then all of a sudden I get a job with Sydney Showboats. I get to work on Sydney Harbour amongst this beautiful dancing girls. So, you know, I thought it was just paradise. Seven years after I joined Showboats as a waiter, I was CEO of the company. Even though I'm a chairman, I'm very closely involved with the staff. I kind of belong with them because I was one of them once upon a time. The one thing you do realize in Australia is life is quite easy. So people don't want to work that hard that we migrants want to do. In Australia, you have to encourage your employees to deliver more. They're not going to deliver because of fear. But there's one thing which I really think is so different in Australia. It really doesn't matter what position you're in. We are all equal. It's not a country where a doctor is different to a plumber. They respect you for what you've achieved. Since 2008, our business has been impacted with the onset of GFC. The customers are a lot more sensitive to price, but I am very confident that we'll all be looking back and saying how we came through those challenges and how good the blue skies are now. We're quite lucky. My office is right in the middle of Darling Harbour. My daughter loves wildlife work. She knows so much about it. It's almost, she's like a curator herself. Monday to Friday, I'm totally in business. The weekends gets me to spend time with my family. You know, it really gives me a different side to my life. I've known my wife for almost 20 years. You know, she's really that woman who stands behind a successful man and say, you're wrong. <laughs> I love my weekends. More often we end up having a barbecue, you know, very Australian. It's always a big feast. Another shrimp on the barbie. There's no really any specific way to integrate with Australian society. You really need to take the initiative to make friends. But Australia being in Asia has to become more sensitive to the Asian cultural complexities to be competitive in the longer term. I'm very Australian in the way I run my business, the way I've integrated with the society. But you never lose what you learned in your early years. I must say that I'm probably a pragmatic Indian with a positive Australian outlook. I'm definitely a fusion. Harbour is always different right throughout the day. For many of our guests, it's probably a once-in-a-lifetime experience. They're so happy. It must be the water, it must be the mood, it must be the bridge. Could be the alcohol. <laughs> I think the secret of my success is believing in my conviction and driving it through and have a very balanced approach to risk. The hardest thing is to get to that launching pad. When I look at my business, I'm probably somewhere on that launching pad with the ability to grow further. My best advice to immigrants to come to this country, particularly from India, is don't come here to make money, to go back home. Australia is really not a place you save money. Australia is really a place where you live well. <laughs>